Yeah. What Wi-Fi router OS are you using, Will? Uh, OpenWRT. I mean, of course, yeah. Speedify's OS of choice for routers, and uh, the OS of choice for a lot of other companies, too. Yeah, OpenWRT is a really neat thing. It was a big one from the beginning. It's also, like, Tomato and DDWRT. There's still, I think, vibrant communities around a lot of those, but OpenWRT, I think, still seems to be the biggest. And so there's a lot of very small devices and a lot of very large devices running OpenWRT. So it's, it's kind of an interesting space. Got its start on like the Linksys WRT54G, the old blue Linksys routers. Will, do you remember them? No. No? This was before so, my time. It was before your time. Oh, okay. Anyways, people found out that that thing was running Linux, but it wasn't open source. They, they didn't have the kernel source for it. Yeah. So there was a, a bit of a fight with Linksys to, to get the kernel source for it. And finally, Linksys was like, fine, here it is. What are you going to do with it? And so then from that, a bunch of open source router projects sprang out. I was asking, Will, what kinds of stuff are you using OpenWRT for? Uh, so uh, I work at Speedify, and so <laughs> doing some router stuff with them. Uh, I use it for all kinds of stuff. I mean, it's it's a very it's an operating system, you know, based on Linux, so you can do whatever you want with it. I mean, you can you can put you know tail scale on there, you know, put like a little mesh networking thing up, connect to a bunch of different devices. I don't know, kick Alex off the network if he starts to <laughs> <laughs> act up. <laughs> you can do all sorts of stuff. Yeah. yeah, I think there's there's a lot of things that people do with the Raspberry Pi that are like, oh, if only this thing had more Ethernet connections right on it. And that's where you sort of make the jump to OpenWRT and you can put it on an actual router for essentially the same price as Raspberry Pi. Now you've got something with like really fast Wi-Fi and probably, you know, triple band support wireless and four gigabit Ethernet ports and looks more like something you just have on your shelf rather than a Raspberry Pi, which can look a little weird and geeky. So yeah, I think the the smart home stuff where you sort of buy into one ecosystem and then you kind of hit the wall and decide that you want stuff from a different ecosystem and you kind of want to bring that all together. There's projects like HomeBridge to kind of bring that stuff all together so you can kind of manage it all from one app. And that's something that makes sense on Raspberry Pi and that's something that I'm actually running an OpenWRT in my house. Seems to still be mostly in like the Soho community. But I think Purple is, is taking that. Yeah, so yeah. there's this project called Purple OS. It's P-R-P-L-O-S. And like a bunch of telecom companies came together to kind of start this initiative to put together an OS that makes sense for like home, these CPEs, this customer premises equipment, like the router that you get from a charter or whatever that you, that you put in your house. Those have mostly been running kind of a mix of different kinds of Linux. And so there's an initiative now to kind of consolidate those around really what what ends up being a, a spin of OpenWRT that mm-hmm. works well for companies like Comcast and Charter and and Rogers and those sorts of companies. So it's kind of neat. So what does it what does it take to port OpenWRT onto new hardware? There's a lot of really cool devices using it, uh, a lot of neat projects that are basing things on it. And um, yeah, we're we're definitely putting a lot of effort into cool OpenWRT stuff for the Miri X510 and and other other things. Here we go. Got one yeah. here. So here awesome, we got our Miri awesome X510. Thing. So, I mean, the core of it is you need, I mean, OpenWRT needs support for the architecture is really the big thing. And you need a kernel that you can build that runs on there. And then you need to kind of tailor the OpenWRT build for that device. Mm-hmm. So at the end, you get kind of a, an image that you can load on the device and that has all the drivers you need and all the apps you need and all that. So so there's like a there's like a set of firmware from like the... The part of the firmware that boots the thing to the kernel that understands how to talk to the hardware to the root file system and then overlays on top of that. Yeah, and an interesting thing about OpenWRT is they've always had this mutable file system overlay thing. And there are some other embedded operating systems that I think, like BuildRoot and Yocto, that are just like, this is what you get. This is what you get for all time. Uh, probably. I mean, so BuildRoot is like OpenWRT's build system kind of pulled out, and so you can do other things with it. And so, yeah, I mean, Yocto is another interesting project that um, I think that's that's based off of OpenWT's build root, I think, right? Is think it? So. I don't know. I think so. So I think Yocto uses build root and lets you build your own firmware. And so I think there's, if you have a router in your house from your carrier, it's probably running Yocto, most likely, I would say. But yeah, the overlay file system stuff in OpenWT, OpenWT is pretty neat, where it's got kind of a, a little bit of compressed like read-only stuff that gets expanded and put into memory. And then you've got a bigger chunk of flash that kind of sort of gets overlaid on top of it. So if you make a change to it, that change gets recorded to that writable part of that that overlay. And that, that core little bit stays compressed on flash and never changes until you update. Similar yeah. to how containers work, right? 
the overlay files. Yeah, kind of right. Yeah, yeah. Containers have. Yep, they overlay changes, you know, layers in the file system. So yeah, kind of. Yeah, it's cool stuff. And I think that they've had that since like the beginning, right? That mutable S- idea. I think so. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, in the beginning, some of their the challenges in in having OpenWrt make sense were were really tough because they're dealing with devices that might have four megs of RAM and eight megs of flash. And so it's like, okay, how do I mm. how do I build an entire system? Uh, you know, Linux with a web UI and driver support and stuff with like four megs of RAM and eight megs of flash. Well, yeah, what do I have to do? And so you end up sort of cutting, cutting a lot and stripping things down. And you end up with, you know, looking at sort of baseline things of Linux, like glibc and being like, well, that's too can't much. Can't use glibc. It's too big. So let's rewrite the whole thing. And, you know, we'll make it for small devices and we'll call it uc libc. And like, <laughs> so you look at things like, all these string functions, they have all these you know, corner cases supported, and we don't really need those. So we'll rewrite all these string functions and throw out all the corner cases and get it good enough. And so, yeah, you end up sort of going to dramatic lengths to, to get something that makes sense and, and works and has all the features you want in 8 megs of, of Flash. And now, of course, there's $3 devices with you know, Wi-Fi and 32 gigs of Flash. and <laughs> You don't need a lot of those corners cut anymore, but uh, it's pretty neat that they did. Yeah, talk um, a little bit about OpenWISP, too. Oh, Other stuff like yeah, that. yeah. So people managing, I mean, if you're managing some OpenWRT devices yourself, it's not a big deal. But if you are, like, deploying a bunch of routers into people's homes or something, kind of want to have some sort of central hub where you can see how everything's doing. And so, yeah, that's where you can get into things like OpenWISP, which is a, an open source project that kind of piggybacks on top of, of OpenWRT and kind of gives you web interface into essentially a ton of routers. So when we first started using OpenWRT, there were some there were some weird bugs. Like DNS would sort of like crap out and go haywire, but a lot of those uh, things seem to have gotten fixed up and it's much more stable at this point. Uh, yeah. And they keep working on it. They do. I mean, it's OpenWRT is kind of an interesting thing where I've got probably half a dozen things in my house running OpenWRT and like three or four of them are just like on my desk just so I can do test different sorts of uh, like 4G and 5G modules and things. But I tend to get something up and running perfectly fine and I forget completely about it until like I have to go kick it for something and then I'm like, oh, I haven't touched that thing in like two years. I should update it. And I update it and then it becomes a hobby for like three months because it does it stops working right. <laughs> so like <laughs> it's one one of those things where like if it has been fine for two years i should probably just leave it alone and not update it but yeah i mean it's it's an interesting thing i think some of the big updates can be a bit painful and i'm i'm curious how the next one's gonna go because i think their package system has been these ipks forever and now they're switching with the next coming release to using apks like the alpine packages. package keeper package keeper there you go so it'll be a little, little interesting i think there have been big updates that have sort of really bricked my devices and I need to hold the reset button and basically start them out from scratch where normally you can preserve settings and things, but I don't know. I think making the jump to uh, the upcoming 25 release or something, I'm, I'm afraid it's going to be painful for people, but we'll yeah. see. I think if you're running that stuff in your house yourself, it's a little bit of a hobby anyways. And so I think you're kind of kind of signing yourself up for that. Sean Tracy says, I use OpenWRT on GLN at router. Yeah, so GLN, yeah. yeah. They're also big players with OpenWRT. They yeah. base their own you know flavor of all yep. OpenWRT. Yep. So yeah, if you get a GLI net device, there may be oddball ones that aren't like that, but everyone I've seen, it has, you know, GLI net's user interface on it, but there's kind of an escape hatch to, to get just into regular OpenWRT, yeah. like advanced mode. That's a good question. So the 2.4 gig signal getting saturated, is that just because of the area you're in? I mean, are you in a spot where you sort of bring up the, like the scan of networks and there's like 300... 2.4 gigahertz networks around you. So in OpenWT, there's a there's a, a graph that'll show you just how congested that band is. Um, yeah, there's like a channel analysis, which will kind of try to guide you towards the yeah. right channel to be on. Yeah, I mean, if you're running that on 2.4 gigahertz and trying to get 40 megahertz channel width, that may be causing some of your saturation. You may actually do better with a narrower channel so you don't get squashed by people on the on the neighboring channel as much. Things tend to be pretty smart, though, where they'll use 20 megahertz if they need to and then expand up to 40 megahertz if, if you're really pushing stuff. But yeah, you may want to try just making sure you're on the best channel you can be and maybe cut your channel width if that'll still get you the speed you need. But yeah, I mean, OpenWRT, I, don't, I forget the interface and the TP links and how smart they are at sort of guiding you to the right channel. But OpenWRT may be able to kind of help you get to the right channel. Some routers have, like, like Ubiquiti stuff has a thing where it's like, 
just put me on the right channel. And it's like, are you sure? Because this will mess with your connectivity for the next half hour. And yes. And so it'll actually kind of scan and listen for a while and then move you around and maybe it'll change its mind. But at the end of the half hour, it kind of settles you on the right channel. OpenWRT doesn't have anything like that out of the box, but it does have that channel analysis where it'll kind of look and see, try to point you the right thing. Yeah. Also make sure your regulatory domain is, is in the right spot. Yeah. Yeah. Since most OpenWT routers have both 5 gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz, is it possible to run them as two separate repeaters for bonding? Yeah. I mean, so one thing like that, you know, jumping back a little bit to that TP link, that device probably supports running a bunch of access points on the same radio at the same time and, and all sorts of weird sort of Wi-Fi features that might not be exposed. And so if you're jumping to OpenWRT, as long as you have decent support for the chips, which most of these kind of, you know, if you're walking into a big store and buying a router, if it has OpenWRT support, it's probably really good support. So yeah, you can do weird things like running guest networks and all sorts of stuff. And yeah, you can use both those bands most of the time. Most devices, you can use both those bands simultaneously. And yeah, you can use those as repeaters for bonding for sure. All right, Ryan's asking, does OpenWRT work with Wi-Fi 7? Um, the answer is yes. There is some support in like the 2410, like the current stable releases, but there's support is really coming. I mean, the driver story is kind of interesting. A lot of the main like devices, there's, you know, common devices that you get off the shelf that have Wi-Fi 7 and you look them up in OpenWT and they say, yep, they're supported. They're probably running a couple different possible chips, either for MediaTek or Qualcomm for Wi-Fi. And they do have support. Yes, there are weird bugs with some of them that are getting worked out and seem like they're probably all worked out in the upcoming 25 release, but there's some things where it's like, oh, you can't use, you know, these bands at the same time with this Wi-Fi 7 chip and just kind of, I don't yeah. know, new, new bugs with drivers, but... So the yeah. story you were, you were telling the other day was, you know, Athros, Qualcomm Athros was this, yep. like, awesome player in Wi-Fi space. They've got historically amazing support for Linux drivers, which makes your life so much easier if you want to do anything with something that's, that's not Windows. But they kind of, what, just slipped up on Wi-Fi 7, got some drivers out there that were a little bit weird, kind of buggy. MediaTek sort of ate their lunch. Something like that. A little bit, yeah. So, I mean, there's the early story was there were MediaTek Wi-Fi 7 chips that people liked and thought were more stable and better in Linux than the AF11K stuff. At this point, I don't know if that's really true anymore. I think, yeah, the AF11K stuff looks pretty good. I think there are still people that are like, oh, this, this MediaTek 79 whatever chip is better. They might be right. But I think that stuff's all getting worked out. But yeah, the Qualcomm Wi-Fi chips are pretty good. All right. Pixel Baby Gamer says, great to see new features and improvements in V16. Yeah. yeah. Let me know if there's anything in particular that you really like. What are the big things that are new in 16? So, I mean, Kevin's been working hard on some awesome performance improvements. We also got some great UI stuff over here on the traffic graph. You can see that sweet thing. Um, so our graph used to just be, you know, like per connection up and down. Now it's... Uh, or it used to just be accumulated, and now it's per connection, up and down. There you go. Pretty cool. We got the jitter buffer. I think that was in the last release. We got the mm -hmm. performance enhancing proxy on routers, which is a big deal. Yeah, so routers can get into this position where they're handling a lot of packets from a lot of devices that are very small. And that's not a case that you see on you know, your iPhone or your desktop, the routers see it a lot. And the performance enhancing proxy helps that particular situation a lot. So we can get near line rate speeds on a lot of these routers. Yeah, load balancing is nice. Yeah, it is. That's a feature people have been asking for for a while, and it's cool to, nice to finally have it in there. All right, any parting thoughts? No. All right, I think we're going to get back to work here then. Thanks, everybody, for joining. Uh, we will see you guys all next week.